How do you optimize students' learning? You may look at the Multimedia Learning Theory by Richard Mayer, professor at the University of California, evidence-based theory. To learn, you need a brain. You can store an unlimited amount of information. New information arrives in a part of the brain, the working memory. For example, what I say and what you see. Your best teacher, your worst teacher. But at seven items, your working memory is full. What does this mean for a normal student? Most of what you learn at school comes in through two senses, the eyes and, important, the ears. The ears pick up words, the eyes images. If done well, information counts just as one item. Interesting for a teacher who uses three types of media most of the time. On a screen or board you can use images and there you can use text as well. And you can also explain in your own words. Professor Mayer gives specific advice how you can support learning. First tip, the redundancy principle. Using images, explanation and text on the board is too much. It's best to delete the text on the board. The multimedia principle, so the use of multimedia at the same time, has the same conclusion. Images with verbal explanation make learning easier than explanation alone. If you have the opportunity, use supporting pictures. The modality principle, media that fit well together, also says if you can choose between using images and verbal explanations, and images with accompanying text, choose images and words. If you still want to use images and text, Think of the spatial contiguity principle, that is, the time between, or more precisely, the spatial proximity of images and text. But splitting text and images means that you put extra load on the working memory. Choose for images plus text on one screen to support learning. But you don't have to avoid text. Text on board or screen can be useful. The signaling principle. With written text you can highlight the keywords. Different teacher, but there is more on this research. A student can learn easier if you use personal examples or examples from their world. Also words like I and you are doing well. This also applies to the text on the board. This is the personalization principle. Formal language and text are extra load for the working memory. Don't read all the words from the board. That does not help. It is unnecessary load for the working memory. This is another example of the redundancy principle. And also, if you want to illustrate your own words with a funny image or some playful text, remember that you put the working memory to work. That is the coherence principle. It's better to use only relevant images or text. These were the general principles. The effects do differ by individual. The individual difference effect. The principles work best when learners have high spatial ability. This is meaningful to measure an IQ, but of course in a classroom this is difficult to determine. But it also works well for learners who have little knowledge of the subject. There are three theories behind these principles. First, the dual channel. Second, the limited capacity. And third, the active processing assumption. Dual channel means that words and images are sensed apart but are connected at the end of the working memory. At that point they also connect to existing prior knowledge. This existing knowledge also is brought into the working memory and that affects the limited capacity. The limited working memory capacity of up to 7 items for about 20 seconds. An active processing is the assumption that learners construct their own knowledge. And that's an important element of cognitivism, one of the schools in education. 
So, how to help students to optimize their learning? Explanation in your own words, with simultaneously direct support of image, is superior. And always be careful with text.